So you finally bagged yourself that big buck, got it home, processed the meat out. Now we're going to show you what to do with the rest. Thanks for watching. Today, we're going to be working with an eight week dry age section. The last dry age section of that roast I had, I've already split it so that you can see, you know, there is functional, usable meat up inside there. You're also going to need three tablespoons of kosher salt and a tablespoon of garlic powder, three tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of minced garlic, and four tablespoons. Of diced onion. What we're going to want to do to start is just like on the last dry age roast we did, you have to remove the dry age section. You're going to want a really sharp knife. A chopping knife is good and a fillet knife. Get through the thicker parts but then keep all the parts that you're definitely going to want. Like look at that, that's gorgeous. The benefits of dry aging. You soften up all the connective tissue, all the fat naturally gives it some neat smells and flavors. This is the longest I've ever dry aged a piece of meat. I just started dry aging with this section of meat. Uh, I hadn't done it before switching up to the fillet knife so I can try and scour out as much of this as I can. On the last dry aged piece of meat it wasn't aged as long so you didn't lose as much you didn't lose as much of the meat, you know, because as you're dry aging it, it is physically drying out. If anyone's interested in seeing my dry age fridge setup, I'd be more than happy to show you. But it is literally just a beer fridge that we don't go into very frequently. So I'm just coming in here, trying to edge out as much of this good stuff as I can. You can see the fat in here is not funky at all fat out here is gross, everything's out here is black, but once you get in here it's all fine and you can smell it and it smells really good. It smells like meat, it doesn't smell like rotting meat. Okay, now that we've got that little steak chopped out, you're just going to go in and just trim off the last little bits of dry. Just the last little dry bits. Anything you wouldn't want to eat, clean the steak up, make it all pretty. And there we go. It doesn't look like a lot of steak, considering I started with probably a one pound roast. But that's why you want to dry age larger pieces of meat. But I was just, this is the first time I've ever let it dry age long enough to where I was worried about it. So getting a four ounce piece of meat out of a one pound roast is probably to be expected for a first trial. We're going to start by rubbing it in a little olive oil. Uh, it doesn't have much fat on it. I've trimmed all the fat off at this point. We're just going to dip our fingertips in olive oil and rub it before we rub the dry stuff on. You know, we need some fat in there. So now we're going to take our kosher salt and our garlic and just lay it on there. And you'll notice it makes a much better crust when we put the olive oil on there and you can dip the ends, you know, make sure everything's good to go. Look at that. So then ultimately that's our steak and that's what we're going to cook. Let's go over and uh, I'll show you what you were going to do with it. Got my broiler heated up. Just gonna put that back in it. I have a standalone broiler with a flat top up top, but really you can just use the broiler in your oven. You know, you move the rack up, get it closer to the heat at the top. We're gonna put that in the broiler on high for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna check it, probably flip it once. It's been five minutes, we're gonna give it a little flip. crust is looking real good on the bottom side with that kosher salt. 
Now that the steak only has a couple minutes left, we're going to go to the flat top and add our oil, our onions, and that garlic. Then we're just going to go ahead and drop a cover on them. If you don't have a flat top in your home, which I can't imagine most people do, you can just do this in the cast iron skillet. Let's check the onions. The onions are turning translucent and the garlic's starting to burn, so we're going to go ahead and get those out of there. And our timer went off with our steak, so we're just going to pull that out a little. Oh yeah, that's looking nice. We don't even need to sear that. That's already got a nice crusty coat on it on both sides. Look at that. So we're going to go ahead and kill the heat. And we're going to plate that up to rest. Here we go. We're just going to bring that over to our nice bed of onions and garlic. All right, after transferring it to our bed of onions and garlic, we let it rest for five minutes. Let's go ahead and give it a look. Oh yeah, I like butter. Probably could have get it, let it go even a little less, but it's still got that pink in it. It's got that nice sear. Give it a taste. That is the most tender piece of venison I've ever had in my life, even though it's probably a little overdone. This season has taught me so much about dry aging. I might do a video just on dry aging, but you know, if you like this one, give it the thumbs up, click subscribe. It's been Field to Table on My Adventure Life. Thanks for watching, guys.